Hey, we're, we're gearing up for uh, today's part three of this series we're in called Uphill Habits. And if you've got your notes, go ahead and take those out. We're going to get ready to kind of go through the message today, and you can fill in the notes as we go. But what, what we're learning, what we're trying to do is just jumpstart this year. We're trying to say 2020 is going to be a different year. We're not going to keep going down the same path and doing the same things over and over and over again. We need to build some new habits in our lives. And so if we, if we want to go where we want to go, like if we're going to get to where we want to go, we've got to change some things in our lives. Can I get a witness? It's, it's called habits. And and Aeropostle said it this way. He's Aristotle, not Aeropostle. Why did I say Aeropostle? I'm thinking about clothes or something. Like, what the heck? Aeropostle. I don't even shop there. I don't even know what. By the way, look at this swag. I know I've worn this a few times, but if you want some City Hope merch, we got it out there for you too. You, can, you don't have to go to Aeropostle. You can just come to City Hope. Aristotle, on the other hand, said, that's your laugh for the day at my expense. Aristotle said, you are the sum total of what you repeatedly do. Like, you, you keep doing the same things over and over again. It shapes you into who you are. And so we're saying it this way. We form habits, and then our habits form us. They shape us. They, they mold us. And so we've got to be careful of the habits that we create in our lives. And what we've discovered is that most people have uphill hopes like, you want to do great things. You want God to move in your life this year. You want to see a, a mighty miracle this year. You want to see some things change, but your habits are downhill. Okay, our, our, our hopes and our habits are going in two different directions. Our, our hopes are uphill. Habits are downhill. So we have to make some changes. We, we, have, we have to realize that hope is not a strategy. It's a motivator. Hope will get us going. Hope will get us going, but it won't keep us going. What we have to do is create new habits. So some of you have tried the habits. You've tried creating some things along the way. And you're saying, man, it's not working, Ben. I don't know what the, what's the deal. I've, I'm trying these new habits, and it's not working. And so I would just ask you, have you invited God into the process? Have you asked him to come alongside of you? Have, have you asked him to do a work inside of you? Have you invited God into your life? Have you done what our theme verse in Romans chapter 12 says, and that is, have you fixed your attention on God? Have you, have you put your focus on Him? Because when you do that, you're going to be changed from the inside out. Come on, you're going to be changed from the inside out. And his, his encouragement to us is to readily recognize what God wants from us and then quickly respond to it. I think a lot of times we know what God wants us to do and then we sit on it for a while. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that's God or the tacos. I don't know if that's God or the pizza, right? I don't know. Man, just respond to it. Just when you hear what he wants you to do, just do it. Just do it. Unlike the culture around you that's always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. Come on, somebody. Our culture around us is immature. Unlike that, God is, God is bringing out the best of you. He's developing well-formed maturity inside of you. This is not, it's not just our theme verse. It's the truth. It's the truth for our lives. He's developing something inside of us. And I believe that God wants to develop in every one of us this, this uh, ability to know him personally. We say know God. God wants you to know him in a relational kind of way. Not religion. I'm not talking about do's and don'ts. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus. He wants you to find freedom in your life. He wants you to settle your yesterdays and get the past in the past so you can discover your purpose and then go and make a difference. Amen? That's what he wants for us. So these, these habits that we're talking about over these four weeks are not just self-help. I need you to know that. These aren't self-help. Help. These are God help. It's not self-help. It's God help. Like God... God when we invite God in the process, when, when we invite him in, he can do a work inside of us. And this is not just trying your hardest and try to be better and try to do better. It's asking God to do a work inside of you. But just because God comes alongside of you and just because God's helping you the process doesn't mean it's going to be easy, does it? In fact, it's going to be challenging. And I know I'm supposed to be positive this morning, but I'm positive it's going to be challenging for you. It's going to be hard. But just because it's challenging doesn't mean it's, it's not doable. It's doable. 
living for the Lord is doable. Serving God is doable. It's not out of our reach. It's not out of our ability. We can do this when we have the power of God working inside of us. So, so what I'm trying to say is you don't just come up to the front for prayer and, and our, our team prays for you and then all of a sudden your habits are just so much easier now. Because if that was the case, these altars would be flooded every single service. We'd all be doing that. Sign me up, brother. I want, I want that treatment. I want, I want that. But it doesn't work that way. It's, it takes work. It takes determination. It takes intentionality. It takes some focus along the way. And so we, we have to know and understand that. So I'm talking really fast today because I've got so much content and I'm so pumped up. Like, preach, yeah. Somebody might say, let the wild hog eat. If you want to, I'm just kidding. Don't say that today. It'll distract us all, right? I did that one time, and, and somebody said, let the wild hog eat. All right. Okay. Here we go. Um, let me recap. Let me recap where we've been the last couple weeks. Week number one, we talked about how uh, we've got to focus on what we do first. Like, this is habit number one. We've got to put first things first. When, when, we, when we put God first, he's going to take care of the rest. That's what Jesus said. When you, when you seek him first and his kingdom all the other things will be added to you. So we put him first. The second habit is to control our thoughts. And this one is a, this one's tough because this is where most of us struggles in our thought life. It's, it's, you can go back and, and watch both of these messages online, but this, the idle mind is the devil's playground. And that's where we get into a lot of trouble in our lives. So we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Be transformed there. So today's habit is... We got to keep aligned, keep my life aligned with my purpose. Habit number three is I got to keep my life aligned with the purpose that God has for me, where God wants me to be, what He wants in my life. I've got to keep my life aligned with that. Now, I go to the chiropractor um, pretty regularly. I like, to, I like to pay a visit every once in a while. And, um, a lot of times it's because I wake up in the morning and I slept wrong or my neck was a different way and, man, I, I'm stiff or, uh, you know, whatever it is, I just, I just need to go see him and I need an adjustment. I, I need to get an alignment, right? Now, here's what I've learned about going to the chiropractor is there's such a thing called referred pain. Have you ever heard of that before? It's where you may be dealing with a pain over here in your side, but it's not really anything to do with your side. It, it might be something in your spine. I know for me, I had this pinched nerve, C6, C7, and it was causing issues all the way down to my fingers and my, my, like my hands would cramp and it was causing me some problems. It wasn't my hand, it was actually way up here in, in, my, in my spine. And, and that's the thing that I've learned about us too is that there's probably some symptoms that you're trying to take care of in your life and you think it's, it's this thing i got to take care of this, but really it's somewhere else. It's another issue in your life. It's another root that you've got to take care of. And that's why I want to talk about we just need to bring our life in alignment. So that's why I go to Dr. Dell, right? I go to the chiropractor so he can get me in alignment so I can leave there feeling a little bit better than I can. And that's what I'm hoping for today is that we'll get our lives just in a, a, an adjustment, in an alignment with him. So I can't think of anything better in this life then that will bring you clarity than knowing why you're here, knowing what your purpose on earth is. Why did God create you? And one of the best ways that I can pastor you is not to sit down and have coffee with you and fix your problems. The best way I can pastor you is to help you discover your purpose and why God puts you on this earth. Because when you have something to live for, Man, it makes a difference. It's going to bring clarity. There's going, to be, there's going to be direction for your life when you know why you are here, when you know your purpose. So why does my life need alignment? That's the question of the day. Why do I need this adjustment? Why do, why do I need to line up my, my purpose and my life? And I want to give you three quick reasons, and then I'll give you uh, s some more um, kind of practical things after that. But the first one is this, because my, my life has purpose. I need adjustment. I need alignment in my life because my life has purpose. That's pretty simple, but it's profound. Like, I have a destiny, and that's not just preacher talk. I'm not just telling you that because it's, it's good for your ears. I'm telling you that because it comes straight from the Word of God. 
Like, he, he has a purpose for your life. Every person on this planet has a God-given gift and destiny. And your life won't make sense until you know that, until you discover that, until you know why you're here. David said it this way in Psalm chapter 139. He said, all the days ordained for me. God, everything that you had written out for me, it was written in your book before any of them came to be. In other words, I didn't do them and then you wrote them in your book. No, no, no. You wrote them first and then I did it. Like your, your purpose was for me before I was ever born. And here's the thing. A lot of us, we've written our own chapters along the way. Come on, somebody. We, we, we've taken the pen. We've written the, our own chapter. We have excluded God from parts of our lives. But I'm telling you, if you will include God back into the picture, you're going to find that there's purpose, that there's destiny, that there's, there's great things ahead of you. You're going to realign your life. Paul said it this way in Ephesians chapter 2. He said, we are God's handiwork. We're his special creation. We were a one-of-a-kind masterpiece, a workmanship that God created in Christ not to go on vacations, not to work hard, not to, not to have babies, not, not to go to school, but to do good works. We were created for purpose. We were created to make a difference. And notice Notice when God prepared those for you, in advance. Man, I like to say it this way. Before there was a you, there was something for you to do. Before there was a you, there was a purpose for you. God had something in store, something lined up for you. So here's a tweetable line. We've been off Twitter for a little bit, right? We've been off for seven days, and I've actually loved it. I have not missed it one bit. I've not missed social media at all. I've, I've kind of enjoyed it. But here's a, here's a tweetable line for you. If you need something to tweet a little later on, here's one for you. We need to live by design, not by default. God has a design for your life, a purpose for your life. There's a destiny for you, and we need to live by that and not just by default. Like, okay, man, it's a new day. What am I going to do today? I'm, no, no, no. I, I'm going to let God define my life. I'm, I'm not going to wake up and wonder what I'm going to do. There's purpose. There's destiny for me. Let's live that way. So the second reason this habit is so important is uh, number two is because my time and my, my attention are valuable. Like you, your time and your attention are valuable. And I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but everybody has a plan for your life. Jesus loved you and everybody has a plan for your life, Right? It, this is the truth. Like, it, there's a lot of things, people, things, places are competing for your time and for your attention. They, they want to be on your calendar. And if you'll let somebody, they'll define your life for you. If you don't decide how you're going to live, then the world's going to decide that for you. The, the school's going to decide that for you. Work is going to decide that for you. Travel ball is going to decide that for you. There's a lot of things in this life that will define your life if you don't define it first. If, if, you, don't, if you don't be intentional with this. Your time and your talent, are, uh, your, your, your attention are valuable. So you've got to be careful just not to allow certain things in your life that maybe aren't bad. They're good things, but they're not great things. And they, they may distract you from the purpose that you have in this life. And I think a lot of us, we're just falling victim to just doing too much. We're doing too much. We're carrying, our, like, we're carrying everything on our shoulders and we're trying to do too much. We've believed the lie that more is better. But more is not always better. But we believe that because, I mean, if you've got one dollar, then two dollars is Come on, help me out. If you got one dollar, two dollars is better, right? If if you've got one circle M donut on day fifteen of the fast, then two donuts will throw you into a coma. I'm telling you. If you got if you got two circle M donuts, they are what? They're better, right? If you've got if you got one car, then is good. Two cars is is better. If you've got one kid, two kids are. Like, mm, I don't know about that. If one wife is good, then two wives is wrong. That's wrong. We, we don't do that. 
here, right? It's, it's not good. Don't, don't do that. But we believe this lie, hey, more is better. I just got to I gotta do more. I got to see more. I got to be more. I got to go more. I got all these things, more, more, more. And, and, and here's another, another line you can post on social media later. It says, an overwhelmed schedule will often produce an underwhelmed soul. An, un, an overwhelmed schedule will often produce an underwhelmed soul. You're doing so much. You may feel good on the outside, but your soul is weak. Your soul is weary. You need some rest. I love what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes. He said, better just one handful with peace in my life. Listen, this is a guy who had, he had everything he wanted. The richest man maybe in the history of the world. This guy was incredibly gifted and talented. He had everything he could ever want, and he said, just better. There's one hand full with tranquility, with peace, than to have both of my hands full with toil and chasing after the wind and working overtime to pay off the credit cards and to do all these things and to put my kids through uh, their sports and athletics. Better one hand full than, than to have two handfuls with, with strife in our lives. It's better. Everybody say better. better. Amen. No, number three, the third thing, the third reason this habit's important is because time is ticking. Time is ticking. There's a, uh, if you remember DC Talk, there was a song they did. Time is ticking, it keeps on ticking, now time is ticking away. Right? We won't sing that today, but... It's not on our playlist today, but it's true. Time's ticking away. This is true on a lot of levels. And if I could just get kind of just kind of in our face today and remind you that you're one day closer to death today than you were yesterday. Time is ticking. And it's like, man, we've got all the time in the world, but we don't. Because I, I'm, I'm not um, a Bible scholar, but I can read the Bible. And the Bible says when you see all these things starting to happen, happen like, like earthquakes and tsunamis and fires and volcanoes, all, r wars and rumors of wars, when you see all this happening, hey, the, the end is near. That's what it says. And, and so I just think maybe we're living in the last days. Maybe, maybe look, time is short. We're on borrowed time, guys. We, we don't have the luxury of living our lives carelessly and casually like James talks about in, in the book of James, he says, a lot of you guys are saying, look, tomorrow, today or tomorrow, let's just, let's go down to the Metroplex. Let's, it, we'll go to this city or that city. We'll spend a year there. Shoot, we'll, we'll just do whatever we want to do. We'll, we'll start our own business. We'll make some money. We'll just kind of go around our lives nonchalantly. Like, we don't really have a purpose. We don't really have a plan. We might do this. We, we might even go to California. Who knows? We, we don't know what we'll do. And James, James says, man, there's no place for that in our lives because you, you don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't even know what tomorrow's going to bring. He says, you're, and he asked this question, what is your life? And before, before we even have a chance to answer it, he goes, your life is nothing more than a mist. It's like that puff of steam when you're putting macaroni on the in the pot. You know what I'm talking about? The water is boiling and it's there for a moment and it's gone. It's, it's just a vapor. It's there for just a little bit. And James encourages us. He says, instead, you ought to say, if it's God's will, we'll do, we'll do that. If it's God's will, we'll, we'll live and we'll do this or that. We'll go to that city. We'll do that thing. But live with purpose. Live with destiny. Don't live carelessly. Don't live in this like nonchalant kind of way. So, Here's something else you can write down. I'll never change my life until I change something I do every day. I'll never change my life until I change something I do every day. And a lot of us, we want change, but we don't want to change. We want our lives to change, but we don't want to change. We want our circumstances to change, but we don't want to change. We want our bank account to change, but we don't want to change. We want a lot of things to change, but we don't want to change the habits that we've created. I'll say it this way. You're going to keep getting what you've been getting if you keep doing what you've been doing. Am I preaching to y'all today? Man, I'm, we're going to keep getting what we've been getting if we keep doing what we've been doing. 
That's just the way it is. And if you, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same things over again and expect a different result. You can't do that. We're, we're creating uphill habits. We're changing our habits so we can get closer to God, so we can know Him in a greater way, so we can have purpose in our lives. So how do we do that? How, how do I create this habit of aligning my life with my purpose? I'll give you four Four things today, four ways that we can do that. And I'm just calling it mastering the habit. How can we master the habit? And first, you just have to decide what is important. Decide what, what is important to me, to our family, to my wife and I, to our, to our uh, home. What's important? And what I've noticed over the years is that people are ruled by the urgent, not the important. You have no idea how, how often over the years you get a call and it's like, Pastor, we need to meet with you right now. Like our marriage is in shambles. And you're like, how, how long has this been going on? Twelve years. <laughs> and you need me right now? How about twelve years ago? Why didn't we do something then? But now all of a sudden, it, it's my emergency to have to deal with, with this that we could have dealt with a long time ago, but we didn't? And I'm sorry if, if I'm stepping on toes. We're building habits, guys. We're saying we're not going to let that go that way. We're, we're not going to go down that path. We're, we're going to build. Our marriage is going to be strong. Our marriage is going to be healthy and, and happy. So we've got to decide what's important. We've, we've got to be ruled by the important, not the urgent. Not the urgent. So life is already demanding as it is. We have to make a decision that we're, we're going to do what's important first. So uh, recently... Um, for, for years, I've heard of a, a planner called the, the Full Focus Planner. Has anybody ever heard of that before? In fact, uh, if you were at 21 Days of Prayer yesterday, Pastor Chris talked about this Full Focus Planner. I ordered one uh, last year, and it, it came in, and I've started using that this year. And one of the things that, that happens uh, on the daily planner, I'm a tech guy, so I would much rather it be digital. But I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go this year on paper. And so... At the top of the planner, it says, list your three most important tasks of the day. Your three most important things. And if you remember Pastor Tom Watson, who's been here a couple times, he calls it the MIT, most important things. And, and this has really helped me. It, just in the first week of using that planner, it's made a difference in my life. Because so often, we focus on the easier tasks first. Most of the time, the, the most important tasks, the three big ones, are the hardest ones. And we leave them for last. And what happens is they keep getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So the idea is tackle the most important thing first. And then you've got all these easy tasks. It's a downhill ride from then on, right, for the rest of the day. So let's not be ruled by, by, by the urgent Let's, let's make a priority. Let's decide what's important first. Let's, let's do that in our lives first, and let's, let's, let's prioritize. It boils down to priorities. Can I get a witness? Priorities. I feel like y'all need a laugh. So I want to tell you about the time Boudreaux went to the Super Bowl. Super Bowls in two Sundays. And uh, Boudreaux went to the Super Bowl one year, and, and he had an empty seat right next to him. Perfect seats, by the way. They're on the 50-yard line. They are halfway up. Perfect seats. And he has this empty seat next to him, and the guy on the other side of the seat said, hey, man, who that seat for? Boudreaux said, that seat for my wife, but she dead. And the man said, man, you, you could have, I mean, I'm, I'm so glad that you honor her that way by keeping the seat for her, but you could have sold that seat for thousands of dollars. You, you could have made some money on that seat. You could have given that seat to one of your family or friends to, to, to be with you at the game today. He said, I, I couldn't do that. And the man said, why not? Boudreaux said, because they all at the funeral. <laughs> that is funny and sad. <laughs> Boudreaux had his priorities out of whack, didn't he? <laughs> they at the funeral. So, so we got we to get our priorities right in our lives Paul said it this way to the Philippians. He said, whatever was to my profit, whatever was important to me, I, I just consider it loss. It doesn't matter now for the sake of Christ. What is, what's more is I consider everything a loss 
compared to the surpassing greatness of our God. Everything else, really, it doesn't matter. And he goes on to say, I consider it all rubbish. It's trash. It's garbage compared to knowing Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing for us, to know him, to experience him. And the only way you'll ever really know what Paul is talking about is if you'll go all in, if you'll just go all in. So the second the second way that we can master this habit is to give calendar time to what's important. We have to decide what's important, but then we have to put it on the calendar. And it's amazing to me how many of us have values that we don't put on our schedule. We say it's a value, but it's not on our schedule. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip this for I'm going to be a little bold and just say you don't have a value if it's not on your schedule. Like, put, put it on the calendar. Make time for your family. Make time. If your family's important, put it on the schedule. Put it on the calendar. If, if, if your marriage is important, schedule a date night. Put it on the calendar. Make it happen. Like, put it there. It's, it's your accountability. And, and we've got to fill our calendar with what we value most first, or else everybody else is going to fill it up for us. We've got to fill it up with what's valuable to us, with what's most important. Give those things in place on your calendar. So uh, there, there's a prayer in Psalm 90, and it says this. It says, teach us to number our days, to number our days, to recognize really how few they are. I've heard it said this way. Teach us not just to count our days, but to make our days count. To make our days count. Help us to spend our days as we should. So how do we do that? How do we spend our time? How do we spend our days like we should? And I'll give you three quick things. And the first one is this. We've, we've just got to make time for renewal. How do I spend my days? Make time for renewal. Some of you are working seven days straight. Maybe you're working for the overtime. Maybe you're working because that's part of the deal. But you need a day off. You need to be renewed. You need some rest like your family wants to see you. You may be doing it for the family, but don't miss out on, on that rest. And I believe this, that you can get more done in six days than you can in seven. I just believe you can. Make time for rest, for renewal, for turning the, the stuff off and going on a hike, just getting away and, and being renewed by the Lord. The second thing is to make time for relationships. Make time for relationships. And the way we do that here at church is through small groups. It's something that, it's just a value for us. We do small groups like, like they're going out of style. Like it's, it's who we are. It's the Sunday school of City Hope, right? It just doesn't happen on Sunday. It just happens all throughout the week. It's where discipleship happens. It's where we say life change happens in small groups, like, life change happens in circles, not in rows. It happens in that coffee shop or in that person's living room or running down the street or riding an ATV somewhere. It happens out in relationships. And beginning um, Feb February 2nd is our winter small group semester. We, start, we go from February to May 2nd. And that's coming up in just a couple weeks. We're going to have those directories available for you to search those groups but what would it look like if you gave 13 weeks of your life to getting connected with somebody, to build your faith, to encourage you, to lift you up? What would it look like? I can tell you, your life would be changed. You would find some freedom in your life. And some of you, you're still, you're still battling that voice telling you you're supposed to lead a group. And can I just go ahead and tell you, you're supposed to lead a group, right? Just, just lead a group. Just do it. To, in fact, today, right after the service, is small group leader training. You can, you can attend that, and, and we'll give you everything you need to be successful in leading a group. And then the third thing that we need is we need to make time for renewal or for reward. So if we're going to spend our days wisely, make time for reward. And I'm not talking about earthly rewards like ice cream and chocolate. I'm not talking about chips and salsa or cheeseburgers, pizza, all of those things that we can't have right now. I'm not talking about those rewards. I'm talking about, I'm talking about heavenly rewards. Make time for reward, 
And here, here's what I'm talking about. There's one day that you're going to stand before God. You're going to stand before him, and he's going to ask you two things. What did you do with my son, Jesus? Did you have a relationship with him? Like, did, did you know my son, Jesus? And he's going to ask you, what did you do to make a difference? Tell me about your works. Let, let's see how you made a difference on this planet. Our lives have to be aligned with our purpose. So we, when we stand before God one day, we say, let me tell you about the difference I was able to make through my church, through the small groups, through the outreaches that we did in our community. Let me tell you about the people that I led to the Lord, the, the, the people that I welcomed into your kingdom. And we got to make time for reward. So I want to take a moment, and I just want to recognize a group of people who, who they're rewarded every week. I'm talking about the dream team, the people who serve God using their gifts and passions here at church. Because what you didn't see this morning was people unloading that red trailer out there at 545 this morning. Out in the freezing cold, 28 degrees, rolling in all of those carts. And, and, and they were setting this place up. They were getting this place ready so that we could have church today. There's parking teams that are out there wearing those big old yellow jackets. And they're there in the heat and the cold and the sleet and the rain. There's people serving on the greeting team who give you high fives and worship guides. There's people in the kids' ministry who are teaching your kids. They're not babysitting, y'all. They're teaching your kids about Jesus. They're giving them Jesus. There's people who will stay here today until 2 o'clock to make sure all of the, this is torn down and put on carts and back onto the trailer all so we could do it again next week. Amen. And I just think there are days when I apologize. I'm like, man, I'm sorry you had to stay so late. And you know what? They, they, they don't say, yeah, I know, Pastor, this is ridiculous. I'll tell you what. <laughs> they never say that. They always say, man, it's my honor. It's my privilege. This is what I was meant to do. I love this. This is part of who I am. And I just want to take a moment to just honor our dream team today. Come on, let's just give it up for those who are serving. We love you. We love you. Number three, we've got to eliminate the non-essentials. Like, did you know there's some things in our lives that just don't need to be there? that maybe aren't bad things, but they're, they're not great things. And we need to eliminate some non-essentials. We've got some things that we've got to get out of the way. And I know you've all heard of a to-do list, but I'm suggesting maybe start a to-not-do list. I just stop doing this. Why do I keep doing this? I don't know why I do this. Maybe it's something that somebody else could do for you. Just create a, a stop-doing list. In, in fact, the Bible says... It says it this way in Hebrews, the author says, let us throw off everything that hinders us. Let's get rid of all of the, the distractions, everything that easily entangles us, the sin that brings us down, and let's run with perseverance. Let's have focus in our lives. Let's decide what's important, give it calendar time, and let's, let's run after it. So this is something that Annalise and I are kind of learning with four boys. We have four boys and there have been seasons where every one of them play baseball this would be one of those times where where they're all playing baseball thankfully this year we have one who decided not to and um, we, we, we've never really minded it we've always kind of had this rule that we're not going to play more than one sport at a time though because it just it's chaotic right and so we're learning how to do this and there's been times where we've had like 60 games in a baseball season that we had to go to. Practice is almost every night of the week. So we're learning to say no to good things, to say yes to great things. And recently, Gideon, our, our eight-year-old, he was invited to go, on, to go up a notch on his swim team. And man, that, what, what a great privilege and honor that is to just be recognized. You're working hard. Here's a spot for you. But it meant, hey, there's going to be uh, practice every day of the week. For an hour, uh, there's it's, it's more intentional focus, like swim meets, all of those kinds of things. And and he loves swimming. Don't get me wrong, but there would have been a time in our lives where we were kind of like, man, yeah, what man? That's my boy. Got got called up, right? But this time it was kind of like, I, I'd kind of like to spend a little bit of time with him too. You know, we have so much going on in our families. I'd kind of like to see my kids too. 
I'd like, I'd like to spend some time with my family every once in a while. And that's what I've loved so much about this seven days of no social media. Did you know that our family survived without, without all of that stuff? We made it. Without Disney Plus, we made it. Come on, somebody. We, we made it without all of those things. It was okay. We survived. And not only did we survive, I believe we had a much better week in our home than we, than we would have with all that other stuff going on. So just eliminate some things. We've got to eliminate some opportunities, some things that aren't good. Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not bad, but they're not great. They're not taking us to the next level. So number four, um, I'll, get, I'll, I'll close out with this and we'll end in prayer as well, is just to regularly take inventory of our lives. Just take inventory. Look, look and ask ourselves, what is there in my life? What in my life is out of alignment? What's causing some pain in my life? What are some issues I'm dealing with? I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about your spiritual walk. Where are some things that you're out of, align, you're out of alignment and you, you just need an adjustment? You need to make some decisions to get back to what you were made for, to live your life for the purpose that you were created to live it. Psalm 39. We read part of this earlier, but... I guess what I've been trying to do today is just remind you. And, and the writer says, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth is. Remind me that my days are numbered. That, that my life is fleeing away. That my life is no longer than the width of my hands. It's, just, it's no longer than that. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. And human existence is but a breath. It's just a breath. Just a breath. I probably, today I probably didn't tell you anything that you didn't already know. Maybe you've heard it somewhere before. But my goal today was to remind you of something. To remind you that your life has purpose. To remind you that there is a destiny for you. To remind you that when you can line up your life with your purpose, that will be one of the greatest days of your life. Because I believe this, two greatest days of a person's life, the day they were born and then the day they found out why. I'm going to say it again. Two greatest days of your life are the day you were born and then the day you found out why. You need to know that purpose. You need to know why you're here, what God has called you to do. Amen? Amen. Hey, would you bow your heads with me? And, and let me just ask you, what's the Holy Spirit saying to you today? What's he whispering to your heart? Maybe he's talking to you about an area where you're out of alignment, an area where you're not really, you, you need an adjustment. There's some pain. There's some issues that, that are going on there, and you need, you need an adjustment. So, Lord, we just thank you today that you're speaking to us. We thank you that your word is true. Lord, we're taking inventory on our lives right now, and we're asking you to speak to us about where we're out of alignment. Speak to us about where we need you, about where we need an adjustment, about where we need you to do a work. And Holy Spirit, we're asking you to just guide us and lead us and direct us. Empower us to, to master this habit, to live our lives with, with the end in mind, to live our lives with purpose in mind to remember that we're your masterpiece. We're your workmanship. So we thank you for that today, Lord. We thank you for that. And if you're here today and, and maybe you need to take inventory on your life and you're thinking, Ben, like, there's, I'm not ready to meet Jesus. You're talking about how time is short and I don't have a lot of time. I'm not ready to go to heaven. I don't know Christ as my Savior. I don't know him as my Lord. And you just need to ask yourself, are you ready? Like, are you ready to be devoted? Are you ready to take a step of faith and to call him your savior? Are you ready? Because I can promise you, he's ready. He's ready today. And you don't have to join this church. You don't have to come to the front. But if you're ready to line your life up with, with Christ, you're ready to surrender your life to him, 
this is your moment. If that's you here today, on the count of three, I just want you to slip up your hand right where you are. If that's you, just say, that's me. One, two, three. If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. God bless you. God bless you. Who else would say, that's me, Ben? I'm, count me in that prayer. I want my life aligned with the truth of God, the Word of God, the power of God. I'm ready. Who else today? Thank you for your boldness. Thank you for your, your courage. Thank you for being honest. All right. Come on, let's say this prayer together. Say, Jesus, I give my life to you. It's not my life. It's your life. I surrender. My ways, my habits, take them. Do a new work inside of me. Will you forgive my sin? Will you cleanse me from all unrighteousness? Give me a fresh start today. From, the, for the, from now on, I'll live my life for you the best I know how. In Jesus' name, amen.